What a beautiful day in the mud. We're down here on the River Rome where we get our samphire from at Riverford. So this, would you believe it, used to be an organic dairy farm. There used to be a big sea wall at the mouth of the river separating the river from the ocean. And during a big storm, it actually broke the wall and the whole of the valley got flooded, which has led to a perfect conditions for samphire to grow. Some people call them sea asparagus. And if you look at it, you can sort of tell why, because it looks like a, an asparagus spear pointing up through the ground. I like to think of them as like salty bean sprouts or like an edible cactus, because they look pretty similar. But instead of like a sandy desert, it's a, a mud flat. But I know what I'd rather, Devon mud flat any day. It's kind of got that iodine-y sort of seaweedy taste, a bit of salt because obviously it grows in a salty environment. Um, a lot of times it's just used as an accompaniment for fish and seafood, but actually the flavour is definitely strong enough and it's definitely got enough of like a flavour profile to actually be the main flavour in a dish. So I'm going to show you something really simple to do with it after we've picked some. And here is the telltale sign of a samphire picker. <laughs> So to pick it, there's no ways around it. You have to get your shoes and socks off, avoid the crabs, avoid the sea snakes and the turtles, and get down here in the mud with your pair of scissors. Don't just heave them off the ground. You want to leave the root there. You want to give it a chance to grow. Don't take the small ones. And if you're foraging for samphire, just take what you need. So the season is very short. So you've got about six weeks from sort of early June to mid July, where the samphire is that perfect sort of tender, small, really succulent stage, where it's absolutely perfect. It's delicious. But it's just one of those things, isn't it? It's just such a delight when you're sort of connected and eating a bit seasonally and especially locally. So you actually know where your samphire is coming from. You don't need it all year round. It can just be one thing you look forward to at the beginning of summer. So I'm going to show you one of my favourite things, which is gnocchi cooked in a mushroom butter with garlic. It's delicious, it's really simple, only a few ingredients. And the best thing about it is it allows the samphire to really sort of shine through. Really easy. I'm going to take my pre-melted butter, because it's a lovely hot day down here, get it in the pan. This is really quick, really simple. Get it in like that. We're going to use quite a lot, because there's a few of us down here today, and I think everyone's hungry. Wash that sizzling away. Now, because we're down here and I don't have a chopping board, I'm just going to crush the garlic in my fingers and add it to the pan. I like it. It's like rustic style. Leave the peels on. You can just sort of squeeze them out of the skin once they're cooked. So I've got these dried porcini mushrooms. At this stage, you want to grate it into the butter or use your field graters or scissors, as they're known. And I'm just going to chop them up because you don't really like dried mushrooms in big chunks aren't that delicious, especially if you haven't hydrated them. But the flavour that they sort of bring to this butter is amazing. So just roughly chop them up. Ah, now we're cooking. You know what? I reckon when you cook outside, things taste 10 times better anyway. Look at that. So that's the salt in the butter. It's just sort of foaming up and is making this lovely, lovely, really flavoursome, really smells. I wish you could smell this because the garlic and the dried mushrooms are incredible. So I'm going to add my gnocchi now. We've already boiled it and then chilled it down. So it's ready to add straight to the pan. Just get them in. So I'm going to add the samphire completely last thing because I don't want the cooking process to destroy the texture. The best thing about samphire is that sort of burst of saltiness when you crunch into it. And if you overcook it, you're just left with this limp sort of lifeless thing. It still tastes nice, but I much prefer it when it's got that sort of crunch and that sort of explosion of flavour. The samphire is all the seasoning you need really for this. Get the samphire in. So all I've done with the samphire is I gave it a solid wash because it did come up pretty dirty. So. It's really nice because you've got the soft squidgy gnocchi and then the crispy burst of the, uh, the samphire with the mushroom butter. Really simple, I think like four or five ingredients. I really hope you've enjoyed seeing where we get our samphire from down here in beautiful Devon. And I hope that this little demonstration has inspired you to try something new of it at home in the kitchen. Any comments, any feedback, then let us know. Hit like, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell and stay tuned for more weekly veg hacks.